they keep moving up, moving up, moving up. Mm -hmm. And did you ever think you'd see Shiloh Christian b competing in the same conference with Fort Smith Southside? You know, they might be down a little bit, but, man, they've won state championships at Arkansas's highest classification. And then Greenwood as well. So I, th I think that's the, uh, a big storyline. Shiloh Christian, hey, let's see how they do. Those two open up conference season against each other. Rick, we might as well just go ahead and, and get our spot now for that one because – Absolutely. Man, we Greenwood and Shiloh. It is high school football time in northwest Arkansas in the River Valley, and the Prep Rally Podcast is back for another season. You're watching the Prep Rally Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Prep Rally Podcast. And just like our football section cover says, we're back. Graham Thomas here with the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I'm joined in our studio by the one and the only Rick Fires. And in the River Valley, Leland Barclay is with us as always. And uh, guys, it's good to be back. Ricky Fires, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, man. I'm I I anticipate this. I mean, football is my favorite sport by far. I don't care in NFL, uh, high school, college, even little kids on Saturday. So I'm ready to go. What year is it? 2024? Seems like I've been doing this 83 years. So I'm ready to go. Let's go. 2024. Leland, how you doing over there? Great. It's only year 42 for me. So Rick's got wow. me by a few. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, uh, you know, it's been a busy off season, and, you know, football really got going for us a couple of uh, – you know, just a, a few weeks ago, when we started working on our football sections. I want to I want to show these to our audience here. Um, the in my in my left hand over here, we have the the River Valley Democrat Gazette football section, which was so uh, so well done with a even a little bulldog on the yes, front, yes. the feature on the Archer Brothers, and then uh, in, in the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette on uh, Sunday we had our prep rally football preview. Get a chance if you get a chance to look at these. These are our guys did a great job on these, and um, truly the sign that football season is here whenever these things start coming out. So we were excited, and, uh, you know, in particular, you know, the, the cover story was on Tommy Tice and Doug Lockridge. The Geezer um, uh, Gazette, what I've been told. The Geezer Gazette. Yes, yeah. <laughs> two old guys coming back to the sidelines. So we were, we were excited to do those stories, and, of course, the Archer brothers from Greenwood and – uh, you know, what a what a show they're going to put on this year. So uh, without further ado, though, we're going to jump right into the Gimme 5 for the River Valley and, and Leland. Um, Gimme 5 on what the top five storylines of uh, football season are going to be in the River Valley. Well, the Gimme 5 edition, preseason edition of football in the River Valley. Number one, it starts with, of course, the Greenwood Bulldogs. And it starts with them because, really, is is there anybody that's going to be able to not only beat the Greenwood Bulldogs, but even compete with them? This is going to be one of those offenses that, you know, when we look back at offenses through the years, we think about the 2005 Springdale Bulldogs with yes. Mitch Mustaine, you know, uh, Mustaine Mania, as we called it then. Yep. Uh, Boonville, two years ago, ran for a state record uh, rushing yards for a team in a season. Uh, and then the Bryant team from three years ago that rushed for 3,000 yards and threw for 3,000 yards, which was just a, an incredible achievement. Well, I think this Greenwood Bulldog uh, offense can be very similar to that one uh, or any of those. Um, it's going to be prolific, to say the least. Then number two, Fort Smith Northside returns to the West. So even without McLean Moody, um, you know, the, the possibilities of them in the West after being in the Central, uh, you know, I think they can finish anywhere anywhere from, gosh, third to sixth maybe in that conference. It's like, welcome back to the uh, and West, then, Grizzly And then Bears. Southside, of course, yep. um, comes down from the 7A West into the 6A West with, uh, as Coach Kim Dameron said, a lot of new faces in a new league. So we'll see what that holds for them this year as well. And then the 3A1, one of my favorite conferences to, to watch and to cover. And this year it is just going to be a great conference to, to, to cover. It's not just a one or two team race in the 3A1. 
And how about the quarterbacks in that conference? It's going to be one of the most quarterback driven conferences in the entire state with, with returning starters, you know, uh, you know, we could list every single one of them almost that's going to have a huge bearing on those teams. Uh, and then, of course, number five, it's kind of a toss up between the 5A West and where do the Alma Airedales fit in? And then the 2A1 and where does Johnson County West Side and Mountainburg fit in in that conference, which is going to be tough as well. Just like any year, you know, there, there's so many storylines to. We could we could probably spend the whole podcast on every one of them. I, you know, Greenwood, no doubt. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of with you, Leland. I don't know who's gonna who's gonna be able to do it, and and that's in the entire classification of six A. You, know, you talk about North Side going back to the West. You talk about South Side going down to six A West. I mean, that's no easy easy task for them either it's going to be I mean, it's going to be a real challenge and i'm with you if they, you find me a, a more fun conference in the 3a1 and i'm there for it because they have got just some really good football teams the, the state champions come out of there the last several years and shoot it may again this year we we, know, we don't know you know we're in scrimmage week this week leland so uh this will kind of move us into our river valley sports report for uh for this week but you know, we've got scrimmages to talk about. We got volleyball cranking up, and just you know, everything is truly kind of getting started this week after a after a kind of a slow first half of August. Everything's gearing up. I know in volleyball, the teams are playing scrimmage games this week, and then the season actually begins next Monday, the twenty sixth. Uh, Oklahoma softball has already started, and uh, you know that's uh, two of the best teams in Oklahoma are from the River Valley, Poto uh, and then Pecola. Both of them off to great starts as well. And then golf, uh, Alma and Van Buren went up to the Springdale uh, golf tournament and had a very good showing there. So, um, like you said, it is uh, the school year and especially the sports school year is definitely uh, here upon us. Now, you know, you got some it's, – it's Tuesday as we film this, and, and we've, we've got some scrimmages. You went to a scrimmage just this last uh, Monday night with uh, Alma and Southside. What would you think? The Alma Airedales, as was picked in the preseason, will not finish fifth in the 5A West. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that. And I guess I'm jumping ahead to the predictions. So <laughs> – um, well, you know, but I'm making one already that the Alma Airedales are not going to finish fifth in the 5A West. Well, who picked them fifth? Uh, I think it was one of the statewide publications. Oh, okay. Well, and technically, wasn't it the coaches though? I mean, they. I the guess coaches, so. The I guess that the is ones the coaches out poll. Form. Oh yeah, the coaches do it. Yes. So, you know, I mean, it, it, I'm sure they were quite motivated when they saw that, uh, and. Uh, of course, you only got to see Southside. Southside's got uh, got some work to do. Is what it looks like from what from everything they're, I read. They're they're very young, but the thing about a young, inexperienced team with good coaches, they will improve, and they do have a good quarterback. You know, he's a you know like a lot of them, he's going to be a rookie this year, but I think the uh, uh, you know potential is one of those words that gets thrown around in sports a lot. But, uh, again, it's going to be very interesting to see what they do in the 6A West because the 6A West is so – it's kind of unusual because we really don't keep up with Lake Hamilton much. And we don't see them during the summer. Russellville, we see some during the summer, but, you know, we don't get a real good feel for them. I didn't see Mountain Home at all this summer in any of the 7-on-7 seven -seven or team camps that I went to. And then their Silo Springs, like you said already – a new coach so there's just a lot of unknowns going into the 6a west which makes it a really uh you know interesting year in that conference yep so the the barclay scrimmage tour continues tuesday evening uh and you'll have uh, van buren and farmington and then i know on thursday you're heading over to broken arrow oklahoma to see north side in that scrimmage along with rogers and bentonville west and then on friday it just escapes my mind where you're going it's an oklahoma school but, well, I haven't decided yet. I may go to Salisaw because Salisaw is going to be really, really, really good this year under uh, Coach Brandon Tyler. Uh, and then I may go to Stigler to watch Pecola, which has, of course, uh, Coda Terrell. Uh, Terrell, who's, uh, you know, being recruited by a lot of big-time schools, too. So 
I'll make that decision. It may be Friday before I make that decision. It may decision. be a game time decision is what I'm hearing. So It, may, it might be. Well, I know this is, this is probably one of the weeks you look forward to so much because you get to see football almost every day of the week. So um, that's, a, that's a fun week for you. Um, well, we will, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will jump on to the Northwest Arkansas Top 5, our sports report with the great Rick Fires. We'll be back. If you're enjoying this podcast, consider a newspaper subscription to the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette or the River Valley Democrat Gazette. We have a special offer for our podcast listeners, so visit nwaonline.com slash nwapodcast to get started. You can also click the subscribe button on our websites, nwaonline.com and rivervalleydemocratgazette.com, or call us at 479-684-5509 and be sure to say that you're a podcast listener. Now back to the show. And we're back with the Prep Rally Podcast. Well, Rick Fires, uh, we are going to uh, get your top five storylines for this football season with Northwest Arkansas schools. You know what? This could be almost any year. When, when, you go, when you win a state championship, the next year they're going to be gunning for you. So i got to start with our favorite Bulldogs. Not only did they win a uh, state championship in Arkansas's highest classification, they went 13-0, and went undefeated for the first time since, like, I think it was 1957, but the first time in the, the, uh, the playoff era. So what an accomplishment by the Bulldogs. But, man, oh, man, you think they might ease up on us? No. Uh, they're starting off at Cabot. Then I think they go to Broken Arrow, and then they come back home, their home open against Texas High, Texas. This is not te- uh, Texas, Canada, Arkansas, used to be really good, Razorback. This is Texas High, Texas. So they could lose more games in the first two or three games than they la- all year last year. So I think that's, a, that's just, um, uh, you know, and, and they can uh, and respond to the pressure. I think Casey Dick really got it going over there. So that's my number one. Number two, we had this guy kind of like me just laying around uh, under air conditioner eating a mayonnaise sandwich, and boom, <laughs> all of a sudden he get, they get a call, Farmington uh, for J.R. leaves, go into private business, and here come Tommy Tice, uh, Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame coach Tommy Tice. So he accepts the role over at the new uh, the replacement at Farmington. Uh, he's the cover boy on our uh, Prep Rally podcast right there. Like I said, somebody said the Gazeezer Gazette, <laughs> however you say that. Uh, but Tongue twister for sure. But after, uh, you know, reading this, I didn't realize Tommy Ty said he's just not a temporary replacement. He plans on being there four, five, maybe six, seven years. I don't know. But that's going to be fun seeing him on the sideline. Hey, and we start circling games. How about this game? October 4, Harrison at Farmington. Oh, yeah. I, I was looking at that today. I was yeah. like, boy. Wow. For Tommy Tice. Uh, made his Hall of Fame career right, right there at Harrison. So that uh, hey, I got dibs on that. I don't know what you got planned for me, but I, I want that game. Uh, let's go to number three. I've been around a long time, like Leland, and you, you know you've been here too. I remember the days when Shiloh Christian just romping all over these, these little bitty small schools where they wouldn't even play them again. But now, because of the uh, equity factor of the private schools, they keep moving up, moving up, moving up. Mm -hmm. And did you ever think you'd see Shiloh Christian competing in the same conference with Fort Smith Southside? You know, they might be down a little bit, but, man, they've won state championships, Arkansas's highest classification. And then Greenwood as well. So I I think that's a a big storyline. Shiloh Christian, let's see how they do. Those two open up conference season against each other. Rick, we might as well just go ahead and and get our spot now for that one because – Absolutely. Man, Greenwood and Shiloh. We can double team that, right? Oh, absolutely. All right, number four, one of the teams um, that really shot up and gained some statewide recognition was the Elkins Elks. You know, when I was working in other parts of the state, I I never heard of – Elkins, but here they are coming off a school record, 13 wins, and, you know, they got beat by the eventual state champion, what, Harding Academy, but they were really, really good. Now the Elks have to replace Dizzy Dean, Deshaun Chairs, two uh, all-state guys who are playing in college right now, and the question is, are they going to maintain that 10, 11, or are they going to slip down to 7, 8, 9? So that's to be determined. And I got to go back to one of my favorite guys, old Danny Absher, over at Prairie Grove. 
They're back in 4A. Prairie Grove, you know, they did okay. They went, uh, I think, 11 and 2 overall in a couple years playing in the 5A West. Very good conference. And I went over there for the picture day, and um, you know, and somebody had maybe a hooting book for, for uh, or maybe yeah, the coaches pick it, and Prairie Grove was picked second. And uh, somebody said, "Wow," but Prairie Grove said, "Man, I guess they forgot about us." So Prairie Grove has some incentive. They're ready to get back into 4A1 and and show them that. Um, you know, they own that league, not the old Elks. So that'd be fun to watch there. I did find that fascinating that Prairie Grove was picked second in the 4A1. Yep. Um, but, you know, uh, and that just kind of leads us into our Northwest Arkansas Sports Report. You know, we've had some weeks here as we've been getting ready for these football tabs to kind of look at this kind of stuff. And, you know, if you think about it, Prairie Grove really did kind of hold their own in the 5A they did. West. So, um you know, it wouldn't at all surprise me if they win the league. I mean, it's, it's just not, you know, they're just not going to roll over for Elkins and, and neither are the other teams in that league. Now, Danny did say, uh, I said, man, because I look around town over there and they're building everywhere in Prairie Grove. And I said, y'all going to be back in 5A pretty, pretty soon, maybe next cycle, cycle after that. He said the biggest thing was the depth, that they didn't have that depth. And he said the families moving out, they're real young families. But, you know, they get up to middle school, then high school. But they said it'd be tough on them. Eventually, they're going to be a good 5A program, but it may take a while. You know, Rick, we got to host a lot, you know, just about all these Northwest Arkansas schools up here for Media Day a few weeks ago. And got yes. to, I'm sure you got to visit with just about all the head coaches, and I did too. And, man, there's going to be a lot of good football teams and a lot of good football players in this area, you know, and in the River Valley. And, you know, coming you know narrowing it down to, to who's going to be able to to win these leagues and conferences and and all that it, it it's no easy task and you think about the seven day west and you know what Fayetteville is going to try and do I mean I mean I think it'd be just not fair at all to ask them to go undefeated again but you know they're going to be good and then you got Bentonville over here to kind of lay in the weeds yep. you know and and but yet the coaches picked Bentonville to win the conference so yeah, and you know, and they've done it uh, perennially. They've been the conference champions, but you know, if, if Fable had won them di dynamic years last year, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. We're gonna. Uh, so uh, you, uh, it was alluded to earlier when Leland mentioned the the Springdale Bulldog Red Dog Invitational, the golf tournament. So that was uh, Monday, the nineteenth, out at Springdale Country Club. And uh, the Fayetteville Bulldog boys uh, won that tournament. You know, there's a lot of good golf teams in this area. Uh, the Rogers Mounties are the defending state golf champions, and they finished like fifth or something yesterday. And they've got a lot of good golfers. So we were able to see some some things there. Um, the the Lady Wildcat Invitational was the week before that. And, uh, you know, the, the Rogers Lady Mounties, who were, you know, they're all sophomores, but they're all really good players. Mm. They won that one. So, you know, golf season now is officially underway. The, the Lady Wildcat and the Red Dog is usually kind of the, the official start because that's when all the, the conference teams in the 7A West or the 6A West are together here for that. Now, Rick, you had the tennis uh, preview a couple weeks ago, and, you know, Fayetteville, Bentonville, it's kind of the same song, different verse for them, but they're the two dominant programs in this area. Yeah, but, the, um, man, that's just why the Rogers Heritage is really good, too. Um, and so we're just going to – I think it starts next week. we got a big meet next week, and we get that rolling. They're, they're, they're just a little bit behind uh, golf, but they get that rolling. And, you know, just talking to coaches, everybody, of course, this time of year, all sports are all optimistic, and we just see how it starts playing out. Uh, the, the volleyball teams up in this area, they're going to be scrimmaging this week. And, and then I know uh, come uh, Monday the 26th is when the season starts. And a big one will be Greenwood at Fayetteville. And uh, oh, wow. you have a – Greenwood was the 5A state runner-up and really could have easily have won the state championship and lost in a five-set match. They're going to play at Fayetteville, defending seven or defending 6A champion Fayetteville. And our guy, Paul Boyd, nobody covers volleyball nope. like Paul Boyd does. Nope, that's for and sure. And he's – you know, I think later this week you'll see in the, in the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette a big – uh, preview section for volleyball and so uh, but again a lot of good good volleyball teams up here and in the River Valley so uh, and then you know once those get going a little bit we get into football season then cross country cranks up and then before you know it we'll be into basketball so um, 
you know, the... We're going to be busy, but it's a fun busy, isn't it, guys? Oh, yeah. I mean... Absolutely. The 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 season really starts flying then. So, um, all right. Well, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we are going to see who you got. What does that mean? <laughs> Stay on top of all Arkansas Razorback sports with a Digital Plus subscription on the Hogs Illustrated app. Get complete Razorbacks coverage in one location. Your subscription gives you 20 plus issues of Hogs Illustrated magazine, the most unique and compelling coverage anywhere in the state, plus total access to all the content on wholehogsports.com, including breaking news, commentaries, analysis, features, recruiting, award-winning photos, and premium message boards. Subscriptions start at just $17 per month. Join the Hog Sports Network team at subscribe.waco.com. That's subscribe.wehco.com. Or call 479-684-5509 to get your front row seat to Arkansas Razorback Sports. Go Hogs! All right, we're back with the Prep Rally Podcast, and we are introducing our new segment this year, Who You Got? Who You Got? And, uh, you know, on a typical uh Week by week basis, it's going to be the games that are that are being played this week. Well, we don't have any games to pick at, at just at this very moment, but there are a lot of things we can predict. So what we're going to do is we're going to go by classification, and I'm going to get the conf- the the conference champion of the conference that we're covering up here, and then uh, then we'll also go for the state champion in that classification. So we will start with two A. And I will I'll, – I'll start us off on this one, the 2A1 conference. Um, you know, I'm going to go with Bigelow. And, uh, you know, defending state champion Bigelow and, and not picked to win that conference this year. Uh, I think Conway Christian was picked to win that conference. Mm-hmm. But, you know what, I think there's something to be said about once you've done it, you know, that gives you a little bit of uh, uh, tradition and a little bit of uh, – can do yeah, mojo can do. to yeah. you so and bigelow returns eight starters on defense i'm going bigelow 2a1 conference champion leland who you got absolutely i agree you know state champions don't go down easily i say bigelow rick who you got i got hector for no other reason than that's where my friend co-worker uh henry app was from <laughs> i thought he was from dover okay uh, close enough class 2a <laughs> state champion this one was tough um, you know, the, that level of football, we don't have a whole lot of two, a schools up this way. And we're not as, we don't get to see them as much, but, uh, through my research this morning, you know, there were a lot of tempting ways. I could have gone junction city. I could have gone Bigelow or Hector or Conway Christian, but I'm going mineral Springs class two, a champion Leland, who you got? I agree. You know, Junction City is hard to pick against. Conway Christian is the consensus pick to win the 2A1, but I'm going back with Bigelow. Oh, repeat championship. I like it. Yes. All right, Rick Fires, Class 2A state champion. Who do you got? I'm going with the East Poinsett County Warriors, which is in Lepanto, home of the famous Turpin Derby. I've been there. I bet I've lost money on uh, betting on the little turtles. You know, they're just kind of like uh, – they're just kind of like cats. They go all over the place. But I'm going to get my $2 back on the East Poinsett County Warriors winning state championship, 2A. <laughs> all right. So that, was, that wasn't that was so bad. Now, was it, guys? All right. We're going to move into Class 3A here. And, uh, you know, we, we've already talked about it once on this podcast, how much fun the 3A1 conference is to cover and, and on a, on a you know, week-in, week-out basis. So it was really, really difficult to – to pick a conference champion, you know, you could have gone Boonville, you could have gone Charleston, who's won it before. You could be the, um, you could have gone with Mansfield, or even one of the sleeper picks. But um, you know what? Who you got? I'm gonna go with Charleston to win the 3A1 conference. I, I, I just I like Coach Ricky May and what he's doing. So give me Charleston. Who you got? Rick Fires. Uh, I'm gonna go Charleston. To me, there's only two uh, picks right: Boonville or Charleston. I'm going Charleston. All right. Leland, who you got? 3A1. I am going the Mansfield Tigers to win wow. only their second outright conference championship in school history. Wow, I like that. You know, I, wanted to a, go, I wanted to go I wanted to go They've got a Mansfield. veteran quarterback coming back and Jeremy Strozier. Uh, and I know Charleston's got Carter Little. 
Boonville's got Jay Schwarzman. One of the most exciting quarterbacks in the conference is going to be Bryson Hamilton from Hackett. So it's going to be a knockdown drag out every night in that conference. And it may end up in a three-way tie. Who knows? But I think Mansfield has what it takes to win their second conference championship in school history. If we end up in a three-way tie, is it possible we could all meet at the gas station in Waldron and flip quarters and all that that deal and to see who gets in the the, the championship or how you know? I, I love stuff like that. Okay, um, state champion class three A. Uh, you know, again, a, a lot of good teams out of the three A one conference. So. Uh, guys, don't hate me. I'm, I'm going to leave out of the 3A1 conference. And um, my my 3A state championship pick is going to be a team that is moving down from Class 4A. I'm going with the Rivercrest Colts out of Wilson, Arkansas oh, yeah. to win Class 3A. Rick Fires, who you got, Class 3A champion? I got the Prescott Curly Wolves. And because I saw them at the track meet, my goodness, those Curly Wolves can go. They got a lot of speed, uh, you know, you know, Something that a lot of these teams up here north don't have, but uh, you know they they, they got to block and tackle. But man, that speed factor! I'm going Prescott, and they got a lot of tradition. Yeah, they almost won a state title last year, uh, losing to Boonville in the state finals. Class three A state champion Leland Barclay. Who you got? Boy, it came down to almost a coin flip, and I agree with you, Graham. Rivercrest dropping down from four A to three A is certainly. Uh, favorite, but again, I'm going going back with, and it's kind of a safe pick, Prescott. All right, so two Prescotts and one Rivercrest. All right, uh, moving on to the Class 4A. So we got two conferences in Class 4A. We need to pick the winner of here. Oh. Uh, the the 4A one. Uh, so uh, uh, once again, I'll start us off here. You know. It, as much as you know, you want to try to say there's going to be a sneak pick in the 4A1. I mean, I don't know how you can go against Elkins. I mean, you know, they are uh, they're going to be really, really good again. And um, so I, I'm going Elkins. And then the class 4A4. Uh, you know, we've got Ozark, and you, you got a lot of good teams from that conference. Um, I think Ozark moving in with with uh, Kobe Wilbanks. Uh, I'm going to go Ozark in Class 4A, 4A4. So, Leland, uh, what do you say on 4A1 and 4A4? Yeah, the 4A1, I mean, I get it. Everybody, you know, Elkins is uh, kind of everybody's, um, you know, uh, pick for, you know, based on the last couple of years. And I think based on the last couple of years and what Prairie Grove was able to do in the 5A West and go in there and be competitive, dropping down, you know, they've seen the way their style of football uh, and what they've been through the last two years. I like Prairie Grove to win the 4A1 and feel pretty confident about it. 4A4, again, Ozark, it's hard to go against Ozark any year. Uh, and like you said, Kobe Wilbanks, a returning starter at quarterback and really going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Um, he's, 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 he's really good. And I think Lamar is going to finish much better in that conference than what kind of the conference coaches have picked too. I think Lamar's going to be up there too because Caleb Green, another quarterback that's real good, that's returning for them. So I see Ozark edging out Lamar, and that's going to be a classic game between those two. You know, oh. they met in the playoffs last year, mm -hmm. and Ozark won. This year they're reunited in the same conference, but I think Ozark wins it. All right, Rick, rapid fire. Who you got? Man, I got to follow up uh, uh, with Leland. I'm going to go Prairie Grove. Like I heard him say, hey, they forgot about us. No, uh, Prairie Grove in the 4A1, Ozark. You can't go against Ozark in 4A4. All right. Class 4A state champion. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking the easy road out here, boys. But I'm a, it's Warren Lumberjacks for me, boys. Same way. I got to go Warren. <laughs> Leland, who you got? Class 4A. Warren Lumberjacks, remember this combination, Jackson Denton and Antonio Jordan. All right. Well, we'll remember those guys for sure. Now we're moving on up into the big boys a little bit. So class five, the 5A West Conference. And, uh, you know, Farmington seems to be a consensus overall pick. But I'm going to I'm gonna Ooh. break the chain here a little bit. Uh -oh. And I'm going to go with the Harrison Goblins to win class, the 5A West Conference. They're – Picked third by the coaches to win the conference, but you know Harrison 
they've just been kind of laying in the weeds. I know I say that a lot. I'm going to say it again. Harrison's laying in the weeds over there in, in the mountains, and, and they are my pick to win the 5A West. Rick, what what you say? So you're you saying got? they're going to come over there and beat Farmington at Farmington? I, I'm going to get you on that. I've got, I've got Farmington. Farmington. All right. Leland, who you got at 5A West? Well, I'm going to go with team number three then oh. and pick the Alma Airedales. And oh, wow. Some of that is based on the scrimmage game from Monday night. They looked really good uh, offensively and defensively. I mean, they've got skill players all over the place. Israel Towns Robinson is going to be unstoppable at running back uh, this year. He had eight carries for 146 yards and touchdown carries of 69 and 47 yards on Monday night in that scrimmage game. So I think the Alma mm-hmm. Airedales. Now that could be another one of those conferences that come down to comes down to a tiebreaker as well. But man, how big is that Week 10? Alma versus Farmington. Oh man. Well, you know it came down to Week 10 last year in that conference. So I, can we all just agree, Class 5A, who you got is going to be Little Rock Park for you? Yeah, yeah I mean, we, I, we don't need to waste our time. <laughs> they yeah. may be the best team in oh the my state. Goodness. So, Leland, I know I you're excited. Who you got, I think the who you got for that <laughs> is who are second. they going to beat in the state championship <laughs> game. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, we're, we're, we're unanimous on that one. And maybe six, on this one, too. 6A West, you know, and look, who you got? I got Greenwood to win the 6A West. Yep, me too. Um but I'll tell you what, I do think Shiloh Christian is going to score a lot of points on 6A West teams, and it wouldn't at all surprise me if Shiloh were to find a way to beat Greenwood. But right now, who you got? I got Greenwood in the 6A West. Me too. Leland, I'm Oh, not... abs- <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I think the who, who, who do you have is probably who you got is probably who do you have that is going to stay on the field with them the full amount of time and not get mercy ruled. And it may be Shiloh Christian. Uh, what time on Friday night is the deadline, by the way? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys may need, to, you guys may need to keep that in mind. Right. When you cover that Greenwood Shiloh Christian game. Oh, Spe- special goodness. rules for the people on that one. So I'm assuming we're in agreement. Greenwood is going to be yeah. the six, a West champion. All right. Or the, 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 the class six, a champion as well. Greenwood, uh, so, and then that leaves us with the Class 7A, kind of the saving the the main event for last. And, um, you know, 7A West, you know, you look at Fayetteville, you look at Bentonville, um, you know, Bentonville West and Rogers are going to be in the mix. But I, I'm going to go with the 7A West coaches. I'm going to go with the Bentonville Tigers to win the 7A West Conference. Rick, who you got? Uh, I got Fayetteville. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Delamar, I think he's going to be like Centennial. I, I know he's going to play baseball. He is, uh, And then, you know, they got a new quarterback, and they got stars all over the field. So, I'm going Fable, 7A West. Leland, who you got, 7A West? Bentonville. They're going to have a good quarterback, as they always do. Coach's son this year. Plus, they run the ball and they play defense. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yep, and they go you know, – Part of the big thing, the big knock we had on Fayetteville for a good bit of the year last year was their running game, and they got that together, and I think that's what helped them win the state title. So, uh, all right, Class 7A state champion. So, you know, there's a, you know, we talked about Bentonville, Fayetteville. There is always Bryant. But, boys, I am going for the Class 7A state champion. I'm going with the Conway Wampus Cats, Buck James. They're going to get it done this year. And they got to move in at quarterback too, don't they? They do. They do. So, uh, Leland, who do you got, 7A champion? Well, and I'm with you. I think the power in the state's largest classification returns to the Central Conference this year, and it's based on the fact that, like Rick alluded to, Conway has a moving quarterback, very good, Grayson Wilson. Mm-hmm. Brian has a three-year starter returning a quarterback, Jordan Walker. So, based on those two things, I think the not only the power of the of the – State's largest classification returns to the central part. I think those two teams will meet for the state championship because last year, Bentonville and Fayetteville had the quarterback advantage with Drake Lindsay and Carter Nye. Mm-hmm. And those two guys were a big part of them getting to the state championship. I think this year it's Jordan Walker and Grayson Wilson getting those two teams. And I've got to go with Bryant because, again, like Bentonville in the West, 
Bryant runs the football, they'll have two thousand yard rushers this year to go along with Jordan Walker. All right, so we got Conway, Bryant, Rick Fires. Who I you got, got? I guess what he was talking about three year starter at quarterback. I got Bryant. A combined 16 starters, include nine on defense. You got to uh, play some defense, win, win state championships. I think Brian is back, and uh, for the Hornets, I got them. All right, all you 7A West football teams, you hear that? We're all going with the Central, so we'd love to be proven wrong. Not like all they hadn't won before. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, folks, that's going to wrap up our uh, first prep rally podcast of the season. Uh, you can hear our podcast or anywhere where you, where you get your podcasts or watch on nwaonline.com and YouTube. And, uh, boys, we're going to sign off for this one. We'll be back next week to talk about all the week zero games and, and recap some of the scrimmages. And, um, you know, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, for uh, Leland Barclay in the River Valley and Rick Fires here in the studio, I'm Graham Thomas. We love you. You're watching the Prep Rally Podcast.